BP is a British multinational oil and gas company. The company was founded on April 14, 1909 by William Knox, Darcy, and Charles Greenway. And to this very day, the company is still alive and healthy. So, how did it become so popular? Let's find out. 1909 to 1954. In May 1908, a group of British geologists discovered a large amount of oil at Masjid Suleiman located in the Kazakhstan province in the southwest of nowadays Iran. It was the first commercially significant find of oil in the Middle East. William Knox Darcy, by contract with Ali Coyle Khan Bakahari, obtained permission to explore for oil in the, for the first time in the Middle East, an event which changed the history in the entire region. The oil discovery led by petrochemical industry development and also the establishment of industries that, that strongly depended on oil. On April 14, 1909, the Anglo-Persian Oil Company, abbreviated as APOC, was incorporated as a subsidiary of Burma Oil Company. Some of the shares were sold to the public. The first chairman and minority shareholder of the, of the company became Lord Starcona. Immediately after establishing the company, the British government asked Percy Cox, British resident, to Berkshire to negotiate an agreement uh, to, to negotiate an agreement with Sheikh Khazal ibn Jabir of Arabia of Arabian for APOC obtain, to obtain a site on Abedin Island for a refinery, depot, storage tanks, and other operations. The refinery was built and began operating in 1912. In 1913, the British government acquired a controlling interest 50.0025% in the company then at the urging of Winston Churchill the then First Lord of the Admiralty, the British Navy quickly switched from coal to oil for the majority of their warships. In 1914, APOC signed a 30-year contract with the British Admiralty for supplying oil for the Royal Navy at the fixed price. In 1915, APOC established its shipping subsidiary, the British Tanker Company, and in 1916, it acquired the British Petroleum Company which was a marketing arm of the German Aeropashi Petroleum Union in Britain. In 1919, the company became a, sh a shale oil producer by establishing a subsidiary named Scottish Oils, which merged remaining Scottish oil shale industries. After World War I, APOC started marketing its products in continental Europe and acquired stakes in the local marketing companies in several European countries. After World War I, APOC started marketing its products in continental Europe and acquired stakes in the local marketing companies in several European countries. Refineries were built in Landarcy in Wales, the first refinery in the United Kingdom, and Grangemouth in Scotland. It also acquired the controlling stake in, in the Corcholets refinery in France and formed, in conjunction with the government of Australia, a partnership named Australia's first refinery in Lamerton, Victoria. In 1923, Burma employed Winston Churchill as a paid consultant to lobby the British government to allow APOC have exclusive rights to Persian oil resources which were subsequently granted by the Iranian monarchy. APOC and the American business Kalosti Gulbakian were, were the driving forces behind the creation of the Turkish Petroleum Company, TPC, in 1912 okay, to explore oil in Mesopotamia, now Iraq, and TPC. And by 1914, APOC held 50% of TPC shares. In 1925, TPC received concession in the Mesopotamian oil resources from the Iraqi government under British mandate. TPC finally struck oil in Iraq on October 14, 1927. By 1928, APOC's shareholding in TPC, which by now was named Iraq Petroleum Company IPC, was reduced to 23.75%. As the result of the changing geopolitics, post-Ottoman Empire breakup, and the Red Line Agreement, 
Relations were generally cordial between the pro West Hashemite monarchy 1932 to 1958 in Iraq and IPC, in spite of disputes centered on Iraq's wish for greater involvement and more royalties. During the, during the 1928 to 1968 time period, IPC monopolized oil exploration inside the Red Line, excluding Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. In 1927, Burma Oil and Royal Dutch Shell formed the joint marketing company Burma Shell. In 1928, APOC and Shell formed the Consolidated Petroleum Company for Sale and Marketing in Cyprus, South Africa, and Ceylon, which in 1932 followed by a joint marketing company, Shell, Mex, and BP in the United Kingdom. In 1937, AIOC and Shell formed the Shell-Darcy Exploration Partners Partnership to explore for oil in Nigeria. The partnership was equally owned but operated by Shell. It was later replaced by Shell Darcy Petroleum Development Company and Shell BP Petroleum Development Company, now Shell Petroleum Development Company. In 1934, APOC and Gulf Oil founded the Kuwait Oil Company as an equally owned partnership. The oil concession rights were awarded to the company on December 23, 1934, and the company started drilling operations in 1936. In 1935, Reza Shah requested the international community to refer to Persia as Iran, which was reflected in the name change to APOC to the Anglo-Iranian Oil Company, AIOC. In 1937, Iraq Petroleum Company, 23.75% owned by BP, signed an oil concession agreement with the Sultan of Muscat that covers the entire region of the Solnate which was in fact limited to the coastal area of present-day Oman. After several years of failure to discover oil in the Solnates region, IPC presumed that oil was more likely to be found in the interior region of Oman, which was part of the imminent Im Im of Oman. IPC offered financial support to raise an armed force that would assist the Solnate in occupying the interior region of Oman. Later, in 1954, the Sultan of Mascot, backed by the British government and the financial aid he received from IPC, started occupying regions within the interior of Oman, which led to the outbreak of the Jebel Akdar War that lasted for more than five years. In 1947, British Petroleum Chemicals was incorporated as a joint venture of AIOC and the Dillister's Company. In 1956, the company was renamed British Hydrocarbon Chemicals. Following World War II, nationalistic sentiments were on the rise in the Middle East, most notable being Iranian nationalism and Arab nationalism. In Iran, the, A the AIOC and the pro-Western Iranian government led by Prime Minister Ali Razmara resisted nationalists' calls to revise AIOC's concession terms in Iran's favor. In March 1951, Razmara was assassinated and Mohammad Mazdeh, a nationalist, was elected as the new Prime Minister by the Maljas of Iran Parliament. In April 1951, the Iranian government nationalized the Iranian oil industry by, by anonymous vote, and the National Iranian Oil Company, NIOC, was formed, displacing the AIOC. The AIOC withdrew its management from Iran, and Britain organized an effective worldwide embargo of Iranian oil. The British government, which owned the AIOC, contested the nationalism at the, in, in, uh, at the International Court of Justice at The Hague, but its complaint was dismissed. Prime Minister Churchill asked President Elsenhower for help in overthrowing Mazdi. The anti mozadi plan was orchestrated under the code name Operation Ajax by CIA and Operation Boot by SISMI6. The CIA and the British helped, uh, helped stage a coup 
In August 1953, the 1953 Iranian coup d'etat, which established pro-Western General Fazli Zahadi as the, as the new PM and greatly strengthened the political power of Saha Mohammad Reza Pahlavi, the AIOC was able to return to Iran. 1954 to 1979. In 1954, the AIOC became the British Petroleum Company. After the 1953 Iranian coup d'etat, Iranian Oil Participants (LTD) (IOP), a holding company was founded in October 1954 in London to bring Iranian oil back to the international market. British Petroleum was a founding member of this company with a 40% stake. IOP operated and managed oil facilities in Iran on behalf of NIOC. Similar to the Saudi Aramco 50-50 agreement of 1950, the consortium agreement to share profits on a 50% on a 50-50 basis with Iran, but not to open its books to Iranian auditors or allow Iranians onto its board of directors. In 1953, British Petroleum entered the Canadian market through the purchase of a minority stake in Calgary-based Triad Oil Company and expanded further to Alaska in 1959, resulting discovery of oil at Perdo Bay in 1969. In 1956, its subsidiary Darcy Exploration Company, Africa Limited, has been granted four oil concessions in Libya. In 1962, Scottish Oil seized oil shell operations. In 1965, it was the first company to strike oil in the North Sea. In 1969, BP entered the United States by acquiring the East Coast Refinering, refinering and Marketing Assets of Sinclair Oil Corporation. The Canadian holding company of British Petroleum was renamed BP Canada in 1969. And in 1971, it acquired 97.8% stake of Super Test Petroleum. By the 1960s, British Petroleum has developed a reputation for taking on the riskiest ventures. It earned the company massive profits. It also earned them the worst safety record in the industry. In 1967, the giant oil tanker Torrey Canyon foundered off the English coast. Over 32 million US gallons, 7, 760, 760, 1,000 BBL, 120,000 meters cubed of crude oil was spilled into the Atlantic and onto the beaches of Cornwall and Brittany, causing Britain's worst ever oil spill. The ship was owned by the Bahamas-based Burkuda Tanker Corporation and was flying the flag of Liberia, a well-known flag of convenience, but was being chartered by British Petroleum. The ship was bombed by RAF jet bombers in an effort to break up the ship and burn off the leaking oil, but this failed to destroy the oil slick. In 1967, BP acquired chemical and plastic cassettes of the Dilsters Company, which were merged with British hydrocarbon chemicals to form BP Chemicals. The company's oil assets were nationalized in Liberia. In, in Libya in 1979, in Kuwait in 1975, and in Nigeria in 1979. In Iraq, IPC ceased operations after it was nationalized by the Baathist Iraqi government in June 1972, although legally Iraq Petroleum Company still remains in existence, and one of its associated companies, Abu Dhabi Petroleum Company, ADPC, Formerly Petroleum Development, Trucial Coast Limited also continues with the original shareholding con intact. The intensified power struggle between oil companies and hold governments in the Middle East, along with the oil price shocks that, allowed, that followed the 1973 oil, oil crisis, meant that British Petroleum lost most of its direct access to crude oil supplies produced in countries that belong to the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries, OPC, and prompted it to diversify its operations beyond the heavily Middle East-dependent oil production. In 1976, BP and Shell demerged their marketing operations in the United Kingdom by dividing Shell Mex and BP. In 1978, the Standard acquired the, the company acquired a controlling interest in Standard Oil of Ohio, Ohio. 
In Iran, British petroleum continued to operate until the Islamic Revolution in 1979. In 1979, the new regime of Ayatollah Ayatollah Konomi nationalized all of, the, all of the company's assets in Iran without compensation. As a result, BP lost 40% of its global crude oil supplies. In 1970 to 1980s, BP diversified into coal, minerals, and nutrition business, which all were di di divested later. 1979 to 1997. The British government sold 80 million shares of BP at $7.58 in, in 1979 as the Treacher era provisification. This sale represented slightly more than 5% of BP's total shares and reduced the government's ownership of the company to 1946. In October, on October 19, 1987, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher authorized the sale of additional GBP 7.5 billion, which is 12.2 billion dollars of BP shares at 333 pence, representing the government's remaining 31% stake in the company. In November 1987, the Kuwait Investment Office purchased a 10.6% interest in BP, becoming the largest institutional shareholder. The following May, the KIO purchased additional sharings, bringing their ownership to 21.6%. The raised concerns with BP that operations in the United States, BP's primary country of operations, would suffer. In October 1988, the British Department of Trade and Industry required the KIO to reduce its shares to 9.6% within 12 months. Peter Walters the, was the company chairman from 1981 to 1990. During his period as chairman, he reduced company's refining capacity in Europe. In 1982, the downstream assets of BP Canada were sold to Petro Canada. In 1984, Standard Oil of California was renamed to Chevron Corporation, and it bought Gulf Oil, the largest merger in history at the time. To meet antitrust regulations, Chevron div divested many of Gulf's operating subsidiaries and sold some Gulf stations and a refinery in the eastern United States to British Petroleum Cumberland Farms in 1985. In 1987, Petro Pet British Petroleum negotiated the acquisition of Brita Oil and the remaining publicity and the and the and the remaining public publicly traded shares of Standard Oil of Ohio. At the same year, it was listed on the Tokyo Stock Exchange, where its where its shares were traded until delisting in 2008. Walters was replaced by Robert Horton in 1990. Horton carried out a major corporate downsizing exercise, removing various tiers of management at the head office. In 1992, British Petroleum sold off its 57% stake in BP Canada, upstream operations which was renamed as Talesman Energy. John Brownie, who had joined BP in 1966 and rose through the ranks to join the board as Managing Director in 1991, was appointed Group Chief Executive in 1995. In 1981, British Petroleum entered into, into the solar technology sector by acquiring 50% of Lucas Energy Systems, a company which became Lucas BP Solar Systems, and later BP Solar. The company was a manufacturer and installer of photovoltaic solar cells. It became wholly owned by British Petroleum in the, in the mid-1980s. British Petroleum entered the Russian market in 1990 and opened its first service station in Moscow in 1996. It acquired 10% stake in Russian oil company Sidnico, which later became part of TNKBP. In 1992, the company entered the Azerbaijani market. In 1994, it signed the production share and agreement of the Azeri Chirag Gunishli oil project and in 1995, the Saha Denny's gas field development. 1998 to 2009. Under John Brown, British Petroleum acquired other oil companies, transforming BP into the third largest oil company in the world. British Petroleum merged with Amoco, formerly Standard Oil of Indiana, in December 1998, becoming BP Amoco PLC. 
Most Amoco stations in the United States were converted in, were converted to BP's brand and the corporate identity. In 2000, BP Amoco acquired Atlantic Richfield Company, R A R C O, and Burma Castrol. Together with the acquisition of ARCO in 2000, BP, BP became owner of a 33.5% stake in the Olympic Pipeline. Later that year, BP, BP became an operator of the pipeline and increased its stake up to 62.5%. As part of the merger's brand awareness, the company helped the Tate Modern Gallery of British Art launch Representing Britain 1500 to 2000. In 2001, in response to negative press on British Petroleum's poor safety standards, the company adopted a green sunburst logo and rebranded itself as, B as BP Beyond Petroleum PLC. In the beginning of the 2000s, BP became the leading partner and later operator of the Baku Tbilisi Cyan Pipeline Project, which opened a new oil transportation route from the Caspian region. In 2002, BP acquired the majority of Ver of Veba Oil AG, a subsidiary of Viva AG, and subsequently rebranded its existing stations in Germany to the Aral name. As part of the deal, BP acquired also the Viva Oi stake in Ru Oi joint, joint venture. Ru Oi was dissolved in 2016. On September 1st, 2003, BP and, and, a group, and, group, and a group of Russian billionaires known as AAR Alpha Access Renova announced the creation of a strategic partnership to jointly hold their oil assets in Russia and Ukraine. As a result, TNK BP was curated. In 2004, BP's oil fins and derivatives business was moved into a separate entity which was sold in 2005. In 2007, BP sold its corporate-owned convenience stores, typically known as BP Connect, to local franchisees and jobbers. On March 23, 2005, 15 workers were killed and more than 170 injured in the Texas City refinery explosion. To save money, major upgrades to the 1934 refinery had been postponed. Brown pledged to prevent another catastrophe. To save money, major upgrades to the 1934 refinery had to be postponed. Brown pledged to prevent another catastrophe. Thunder Horsepower PDQ BP's giant new production platform in the Gulf of Mexico nearly sank during a hurricane. In their rush to finish the $1 billion platform, workers had installed a valve backwards, allowing the ballast tanks to flood. Inspections revealed other shoddy work. Repairs costing hundreds of millions would keep Thunder Horse out of commission for three years. Lord Brown resigned from BP on May 1, 2007. The head of exploration and production, Tony Hayward, became the new chief executive. In 2009, Hayward shifted emphasis from Lord Brown's focus on alternative energy, announcing that safety would henceforth be the company's number one priority. In 2007, BP formed with A.B. Sugar and Dewpoint a joint venture of Avergo Fuels which opened a bioethanol plant in Salsand near Hull, United Kingdom in December 2012. Together with DuPont, BP formed a biotubinol joint venture with Betamax by acquiring Bupiton technology company Bupitonol LLC in 2009. In 2009, BP BP obtained a production contract to develop the supergiant Rumelia field with joint venture partner CNPC. And now we come to the present. In January 2010, Carl Henrik Savenberg became chairman of BP Board of Directors. On April 20th, 2010, the Deepwater Horizon oil spill, a major industrial, industrial accident happened. Consequently, Bob Dudley replaced Tony, Hay Tony Hayward as the company CEO serving from October 2010 to February 2020. BP announced a divestment program to sell about $38 billion worth of non-core assets to compensate its liabilities related to the accident. 
In July 2010, BP sold its natural gas activities in Alberta and British Columbia, Canada to Apache Corporation. It sold its stake in the Pajaria and Boracan fields in the Venezuela and in Lante and Landu fields, the Nam Khan Son pipeline and terminal, and the Phu Mai 3 power plant in Vietnam to TMK BP, Force Courts and Supply Business in Iberia, Botswana, Zambia, Tanzania, and Mowali to Puma Energy, the Witch Farm onshore oil field in Dorset, uh, and a package of North Sea gas assets to Perignico, natural gas liquids business in Canada, to, Plain, to Plains All American Pipeline LP, natural gas assets in Kansas to Lynn Energy, Carson Refinery to Southern California, and its ARCO retail network in Tesoro. Sunray and Hemphill gas processing plants in Texas, together with their associated gas gathering system, to Eagle Rock Energy Partners, the Texas City Refinery and Associated Assets, to Marathon Petroleum, the Gulf of Mexico, located in Marlin, Dorado, King, Corn Mountain, and Holston fields, as also is a stake in non operated Diana, Hoover, and Ram Howell fields to planes exploration and, prod and production, non-operating stake in the Dragoon oil field to Norsku Shell, and the UK's Liquefield Petroleum Gas Distribution Business to DCC. In November 2012, the US government temporarily banned BP from bidding any new federal contracts. The ban was conditionally lifted on in March 2014. In February 2011, BP formed a partnership with Reliance Industries taking a 30% stake in a new Indian joint venture for an initial payment of $7.2 billion. In September 2012, BP sold its subsidiary BP Chemicals Malaysia SDN BHD, an operator of Katana Purified Separable Acid PTA plant in Malaysia to Reliance Industries for, for $230 million. In October 2012, BP sold its stake in TMK BP to Rosneft for $12.3 billion in cash and 18.5% of, Ros uh, of Rosneft stock. The deal was completed on March 21, 2013. In 2012, BP acquired an Etheridge in the Altitia Shell, but these development plans were cancelled in 2014. In 2011 to 2015, BP cut down its alternative energy business. The company announced its departure from the solar energy market in December 2011 by closing its solar power business, BP Solar. In 2012, BP shut down the BP Biofuels Highlands project, which was developed since 2008 to make cellulosic ethanol from, em from emerging and energy crops like switchgrass and from biomass. In 2015, BP decided to exit from the, from other electrical like ethanol business. It sold its stake in Vivirgo to Associated British Foods. BP and DuPont also mothballed their joint biotonal pilot plant in Salton. In June 2014, BP agreed to a deal worth around $20 billion to supply CNOOC with liquefied natural gas. In 2014, Stat Statoil Fuel and Retail sold its Ativation Fuel business to BP. To ensure the approval of competition authorities, BP agreed to sell the former Statoil Avitation Fuel business in Copenhagen, Stockholm, Gothenburg, and Malamo airports to World Fuel Services in 2015. In 2016, BP sold the Decatur, Alabama plant to Endormia Ventures of Thailand. At the same year, its Norwegian daughter company BP Norg merged with Det Norske Oljeskap to form Acker BP. In April 2017, the company reached an agreement to sell its Fortis pipeline system to the North Sea to Ineos for, two, for $250 million. The sale included terminals at Dalami and Kinnell, a site in Aberdeen, and the Fortis Unity platform. In 2017, the company floated its subsidiary BP Midstream Partners LP, a pipeline operator in the United States, 
at the New York Stock Exchange. In Argentina BP, Brida's Corporation agreed to merge their interest in Pan American Energy and Axian Energy to form a jointly owned Pan American Energy Group. In 2017, BP invested $200 million to acquire a 43% stake in the solar energy developer LightSource Renewable Energy, a company which was renamed LightSource BP. In March 2017, the company acquired Clean Energy's Biothemy business and assets including its production sites and existing supply contracts. In April 2017, its subsidiary Betamax bought, its, bought an institutional production company, Eskia Energy. In 2018, the company purchased BHP's Shell assets in Texas and Louisiana, including Petrohawk Energy for $10.5 billion, which were integrated with its subsidiary BPX Energy. Also in 2018, BP, BP bought a 16.5% interest in the Clare Field in the, U in the UK from Conoco Phillips, increasing its share increasing its share to 45.1%. BP paid 1.3 billion pounds and gave to Conoco Phillips its 39.2% non-operated stake in the Karapaka River oil field and satellite oil fields in Alaska. In December 2018, BP sold its wind assets in Texas. In 2018, BP acquired Chargemaster, which operated in the, in the UK's largest electric vehicle charging network. In 2019, BP and Diddy Chunks formed a joint venture to build out electric vehicle charging infrastructure in China. In September 2020, BP announced it would build out a rapid charging network in London for Uber. In January 2019, BP discovered 1 billion barrels, 160 by 10 6 meters cubed oil at its Thunder Horse location in the Gulf of Mexico. The company also announced plans to spend 1.3 billion 1.3 billion dollars on a third phase of its Atlantis field in New Orleans. Helge Lund succeeded Carl Henrik Savenberg on January 1st, 2019 as chairman of BP PLC, board of directors, and Bernard Looney succeeded B Bob Dudley on February 5th, 2019, February 5th, 2020 as chief executive. Amidst the COVID-19 pandemic, BP claimed that it would accelerate the transition to a lower carbon e economy and energy system after announcing that the company had to write down $7.5 billion for the second quarter of 2020. On June 29th, 2020, BP sold its petrochemicals unit to Ineos for $5 billion. The business was focused on aromatics and acilitas. It had interest in 14 plants in Asia, Europe, and the U.S. and achieved production of 9.7 million metric tons in 2019. On June 30, 2020, BP sold all its Alaska upstream operations and interest including interest in Puerto Bay oil field to Hill Crop Energy for $5.6 billion. On December 14, 2020, it sold its 49% stake in the Trans-Alaska Pipeline System to Harvest Alaska. In September 2020, BP formed a partnership with Equinor to develop offshore wind and announced it will acquire 50% non-operating stake in the Empire Wind off New York and Beacon Wind off Massachusetts offshore wind farms. The deal, the deal is expected to be completed at the first half of 2021. In December 2020, BP acquired a majority stake in Fifinit Carbon, the largest forest carbon offsets developer in the United States. And there is the history of BP. How did it become so popular? Well, when they formed, well, well, when they um, basically did that merger with Shell, um, they became very popular after that. And as a lot of you guys know, for those who have seen a lot of my history videos, a lot of companies became popular after they have merged with other businesses and have also struck deals with other businesses as well. Anyways, this is where I'm going to end off this video. If you guys happen to enjoy this video, please make sure you hit that like button and also don't forget to subscribe because I do videos every single day. And also don't forget to and also don't forget to ring that no, 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 and also don't forget to ring that notification bell so you never miss a single video that I upload. And also don't forget to subscribe and ring the and, and ring the notification bell on my second channel. My second channel will be the third link 
in the description below. And if you guys would like to send me fan art, you guys can send me fan art on my Instagram. My Instagram will be the second link in the description below. And if you guys would like to join my Roblox fan group, my Roblox fan group will be the first link in the description below. And if you guys would like to follow me on Twitter, my Twitter will be the fourth link in the description below. And if you guys would like to follow me on Reddit, my Reddit will be the fifth link in the description below. And if you guys would like to follow me on TikTok, my TikTok will be the sixth link in the description below. And if you guys would like to check out my Facebook page, my Facebook page will be the seventh link in the description below. And until then, I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye!